Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to you all. Hope you're doing well this morning. Everybody feeling okay? Maybe a small crowd, but we are mighty. So we're going to kick it off here for you this morning. Standing outside the door of love and mercy, you wonder if there's a place there for Inside, but still you're searching for someone who understands the pain you've been through. Well, the door's unlocked, the lights are on. What are you waiting for? Come on in, welcome home. You are loved, you belong here now. No matter where you've been, come on in. You'll find the place of rest in the arms of spirit. God's waited so long for your homecoming day. God knows the peace you seek and the hurt you're feeling. Spirit wants to hold you and to wipe the tears away. Everybody. It's so good to see you here this morning. Many of our regulars are up at Duncan Center supporting Libby Lay as she is ordained today by the uh, Interfaith Seminary. So if you're missing some of the friends you normally look forward to seeing on Sunday, that may be where they are. But we are here, right? Looking forward to a wonderful day. If you haven't met me yet, I'm Bev Spivey. Happy to serve here with my husband, Reverend Lawrence Palmer. So we look forward to being with you today. Our musicians, of course. James, right in from uh, a wedding in New York. I saw on Facebook, James posted a picture of himself with the, with the upright bass and a guy at piano, and he said, ready for the wedding at Botanical Gardens, right? I was in the Bronx last night. And people, people were commenting on his Facebook message, hey, congratulations, you make a nice couple. <laughs> It was the gentleman who was playing piano, so, yes. Uh, we have Mr. John Rose at the piano this morning with us once again. Mr. Jeff Renza at the drum set. We're very fortunate to have Mr. Peter Wallace at the organ this morning. And his lovely and talented wife, Miss Samantha Natalie Wallace, is our featured soloist. We have music from Robin Thicke, 
this morning. Pre-Blurred Lines, Robin Thicke. And actually, another song from Faith Rivera. There you go. Very good. Now, how many of you have been here more than 10 times? Oh, OK. What's new? Oh, aren't you very observant? You know, we work on awareness and being present in the moment. We want to feel our thanks for Unity of Hollywood. They sold their church and disbanded as of the end of the year. And last Saturday, Lawrence went as they cleared out their storage pod, and they gave us uh, this acrylic lectern. And so biggest thanks to those of you from Hollywood who are continuing on with us in unity. So we have gratitude for that group and bless them in their, in their journey forward. So let us begin with our journey today. Our theme is Courage to Imagine all year long, as we always focus on that very important power that we have with our imagination. And this month is on confidence. Very important that we build our spiritual strength, our inner confidence. So won't you join me with this affirmation? Together, I am bold and confident. I live with divine audacity. OK. And our vision, centered in God, we create an ever-expanding spiritual community of one. And our mission statement, together, we are a spiritual beacon of inspiration, abundance, and enlightenment. So let us pray as we center in this morning with such gratitude for our various friends on the spiritual path, many of them in unity, many of them in other pathways. We feel gratitude for the teachings of Jesus and Buddha and the Fillmore and many others as we take into our heart those things which we know to be true and we open our heart to share them and so this day is about sharing and taking in insights feelings from our music from our lessons and from our wonderful loving community we are very grateful and so it is amen and let us close our prayer time with uh, our, the Psalm 23. Together, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And now let's stand and sing. This song is called An, Abun An Abundance of Rain. The rain is just a metaphor. It's a song about being and feeling blessed. So keep that in mind. And it's right here. Can you do that with me? That's where it is. I can hear the sound. It's the sound of the abundance of rain. I can see the cloud filled with God's favor. It's heading this way. for me in the abundance of rain. I can hear the sound. It's the sound 
out of the abundance of rain. I can see the cloud filled with God's favor. It's heading this way. to take that literally, right? Although I'm sure happy for all the rain that we have. Our grass is so nice and green. It's wonderful. Well, if you're here for the very first time, we want to give you a special warm welcome. We have a simple brochure to give you that talks about unity. So would you raise your hand, please, if you're with us for the very first time. Oh, welcome. We welcome you. That will tell you about unity. Uh, that will tell you about this facility and has our contact information. We invite you to share out your contact information with us on that yellow form that is there. And any of you that are not receiving our emails, I ask that you fill out that contact form and get it into us. Uh, you will be receiving a survey. If you are on our mailing list, you need not be a member. If you are on our email list, you will be receiving a survey. It's very short. It's coming out on Survey Monkeys, so it'll be anonymous. You don't need to put your name on it. And uh, we want to know your ideas about our future, expanding our outreach, what you like, what you think, you know, any comments you want to give us. So check your junk mail uh, during this week just in case it goes there, but you will, if you're on our email list, you will receive a survey this week. So look forward to that. Everybody, you're welcome to come to Fellowship Hall next door for our social time afterwards. We look forward to, to getting together there. You're also invited to participate in prayer. We have a chaplain available at a half hour before every Sunday service, so at 1030. There's a room, uh, the first room on the right, going down that hallway to Fellowship Hall. There will be a chaplain there if you would like prayer with the chaplain or just private personal prayer. That's available to you. Chaplains also stand and are ready to pray with you at the end of the service. Many times I don't remember to announce that they are there. That's what they're there for. Go ahead and enjoy some affirmative prayer with our chaplains. And now we've got some announcements, of course. Sunday Sessions is today with Reverend Lawrence, here to answer your questions and talk in more depth about the theme. We also want to share that next Sunday, Lawrence and I will be attending uh, the annual Unity Convention in Kansas City uh, this week. We leave tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. 
pray for us. And then uh, from there, we're going for a week's vacation in, in Colorado, where Lawrence used to live and, and where we will enjoy uh, the Colorado scenery. And he will be speaking at his former church in Colorado Springs on Father's Day. So next Sunday, I would ask you all to come out and support our speaker, who will be uh, Wilfredo Ruiz. He is a chaplain. He's also a civil rights attorney. And he is director of communications at an organization called the Council on American and Islamic Relations. And we have come to know him and others through our interfaith council that we belong to. I got to thinking that Abraham, the patriarch of Christianity, is also the patriarch of Islam and Judaism. How many of you know the story about Abraham and what I'm talking about? A couple of you. The ones that had their hands up, explain it to the other ones. Because I don't know what he's going to cover. But come out and give your support for our belief in many paths to God and respect for each person's uh, religion. So come on out and hear him on Father's Day. Okay, we then uh, are trusting that you'll come out for the drumming circle in our absence on Thursday, June 24th. It'll be up on Pompano Beach. If it's raining, it's in Fellowship Hall. S June 21st, sorry, Thursday the 21st, 7 o'clock. Uh, that says to 9, but we usually finish up at 8. 7 to 8. Uh, bring your drums, bring your rattles, bring your sticks, whatever else it is. You bring Laura what, what uh, cans with stones in them. You can get creative. Okay. Another very important thing is the peace event for learning more and more about peace and how trauma in our lives affects our view of war and how we're able to bring about peace. This will be the weekend of July 20th through 22nd. Information is on our website. Tickets are through Eventbrite. And the Friday evening, Sunday afternoon events are donation only. Saturday, an entire day, 10 to 5, is just $40. We are encouraging you to, we don't have them this week, we'll have them next week, flyers and postcards to distribute when you go to Whole Foods and yoga and even getting your nails done. Put this out there into the community. This is not a religious service. This is an education service for the entire community. So we really want to promote that. But we are hosting it right here. We also have our SEE uh, spiritual education series coming up for a week in October, 22nd to 26th. And this is up there for those of you who are considering being a student. There is a flyer on the table out there that tells you what the classes are and when and gives more information. We're doing this preview now. We don't even have registration open yet, but we want to give our congregants here the opportunity for a discounted rate if you'll serve as volunteer and, and helping us host this wonderful week. And... That was a pretty sad case of dancing on my part. Bev looked great. And I asked Bev if I could light up a Cuban cigar, and she said, not on your life, because of the fire alarm. But a quick announcement, we are going to Cuba. <laughs> Chris and I are thrilled to put together a cruise package uh, departing next February, February 26th through March 2nd, four nights on the Royal Caribbean Majesty of the Seas. If you joined us last year in Mexico, you know what a fabulous time we had. We had almost 60 people on that cruise, and we're expecting the same amount going with us to Havana. We're gonna have a fabulous time. Uh, this cruise has no sea days. It's gonna be very action-packed. It stops in Key West, and then we have an overnight in Havana. So it's actually a day and a half in Havana, and if you have Havana checked off on your bucket list to go visit 
join us on this cruise. We have flyers available in the fellowship hall after church. Come join and pick up one of those. And then also we'll be holding information sessions uh, starting next Sunday and the following Sunday uh, to give you all the information you could, would ever need about going to Cuba and uh, tell you more about Majesty of the Seas. So come join us. Beth and Lawrence are going, Chris and I are going, and a lot of other people. So we're going to have a fabulous time. Thanks, Ron. Let's all stand and greet each other. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Right now, we need your presence here. Shower down your grace. Music stops. We all sit back down. Thank you. Good morning. I am Shelley Francis, and I will be reading the daily word for today, which is consciousness. I use my creative power for a fulfilling life. New Thought leader Emmett Fox said, we have the key to life, and that key is that life is a state of consciousness. He went on to say, the great creative word is I am. It is the secret of life. How exciting to know I hold the key to life through my consciousness and the creative power of my words. Whatever I hold in thought, whatever thoughts I connect with my divine nature, I demonstrate in my life. When I connect my consciousness with I am, the divine power within me, I use my creative power to bring about the good I desire. In God consciousness, I am continually aware of my divine power. 
I affirm the truth about myself. I am wise. I am whole. I am love. I am worthy. I am good. And the scripture is, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. And right now as the prayer chest comes forward, we'd like to begin a time of prayer and meditation by singing together, I am at peace. I invite you now to settle into that very comfortable and familiar position for your body. And as you do, you can give your body permission to relax, to let go, to let be. And with that loving permission, your body will immediately move its focus from the outer to the inner. You can also do the same for your mind. Give your mind that permission to relax because this is a time of being. There's nothing you need to do, nothing you need to think about. It is a time of pure being. And it is a time of peace and a place of peace. No matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in your life, this now is a place and a time of peace. And everything that we are is enfolded in this holy peace and presence. We are held, we are loved, we are transformed and we are healed. And with our body at ease, with our mind at ease, our awareness is free to commune with spirit in this context of peace. For some of you, this time will be profoundly still. For some, it will be full of color and sound and images, feelings. It is your time. Allow your awareness to be completely immersed in this divine presence and peace. So as we have prepared, let us now be together.
Now as you prepare to move your awareness back to your body, back to this place and this time, you know that even an instant during which your awareness is immersed in that deep of your heart that healing and transformation take place. And you know that you can bring with you into your body, into your heart, into your mind, the essence of this experience and the stillness. And in this coming week, as you choose to, you can simply close your eyes, take a deep breath, and bring back once again the essence of this experience and be blessed all over again. So now with a deep sense of gratitude for this opportunity of being together in this stillness, I invite you to take a deep, slow breath into your nose. Hold it for a moment. And exhale slowly through your mouth. And when you're ready, open your eyes and we will sing together, Alleluia. Alleluia. Many measles and hand grenades. Do -do 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 -do. Everyone skinny and overweight. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. And I don't know if living is worth a fight. So some. Just don't. It's such a beautiful world. Time stands still for each one of us. Who maybe I'm no hero, but I can't help myself. to smile today do 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 people are pregnant and underpaid do 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 yeah and I don't know if living is worth a time so sometimes just don't. It's such a beautiful world. Just stand still for a minute more. Ooh, maybe I'm no hero, but I can't help myself.
if given is worth the loss. Ooh, it's such a beautiful world. Time stands still for each one of us. That's how it goes. That's Samantha Natalie. Yeah. Thank you, band, as usual. Wonderful job. Yeah. I'll have to tell you a story right off the bat about this lectern. As Bev said, it was a gift from Unity of Hollywood when they shut down their business and they chose to give it to us. They, they circled around it and blessed it before I took off with it. But there's a story that goes along with this because it, it, you never know how things are going to play out. You never know what's going to happen. In 2001, Bev was the chair of the Minister Search Committee at Hollywood and I was a candidate and I stood behind this podium and preached in Unity of Hollywood in 2001, and that's where I first met Bev. And now here, what, 17 years later, here I stand behind the very platform that I preached behind in Hollywood. You never know what's gonna come around, so be careful. The scripture says be careful who, how you treat people because you many times you entertain angels unawares, so you never know when something's gonna show up down the road somewhere, so be good. Pardon? Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yes, Bev was the angel. <laughs> As she just reminded me. <laughs> oh, it's a wonderful life, is it not? Okay. This month we're talking about confidence and being confident. Last week I shared with you about confident being. How do we go about gaining confidence and claiming confidence as our own? And you can go back and listen to that sermon. I'm not going to preach it again here for you. But that's the starting place, is confident being. And today I want to move forward with that and talk about confident living. The passage of Scripture I'd like to share with you comes from Philippians chapter 1. Paul was writing to the little church in Philippi that he had started there. And he said, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that spirit who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, as we come to this place of being confident, how is it that we live it out? How do we manifest confidence once we get it? We don't just sit around and look at it. It's for using. It's for expressing. How in the world do we do that? Now, there are three areas we want to look at where we express our confidence out in the world and we utilize our confidence. The first one is with God. If I am a confident person, if my being is confidence, how does that show up? in my relationship to God. Does it affect that relationship? And I think it does in a dramatic fashion. In Hebrews chapter 4, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed down into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of God that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 
Now, this is one of the ways that confidence that we have is manifested in our relationship to God is that we come before God boldly, not with hesitation, not with concern, but boldly we come knowing that we are safe, we're accepted in that place. And there's another passage of scripture that when I was a kid, we used to call it God's telephone number, Jeremiah 33.3. Now remember that, God's telephone number, Jeremiah 33.3. Call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So this confidence that we have shows up in our relationship with God because when we have doubts about whether God loves us, we can say, I am confident that God loves me. When we have doubt whether our prayers are being heard or not, we can say, I am confident that my prayers are being heard. When we have a doubt whether we are worthy in the eyes of God, we can say, I have confidence or I am confident that I am accepted by God. When you have fears, when you're afraid to be honest with God about what's going on, you can be honest, you can lay it all out there and say, I am confident that I have no reason to fear. When we have questions that don't have answers, we can say, I am confident that I can ask this question and that I can feel however I need to feel. Come boldly before God with who you are and what you are. And know, be confident that you are safe in that place and that you will always be accepted. The New Testament teaches us there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There's no judgment. There is pure presence. And we are immersed at all times in that pure presence of God. I am confident of that. So with our relationship with God, being confident really pays off. It really makes a difference because when you take that confidence that you have found, that confidence you have created, that confidence that you have claimed, then you can stand before God and claim all the blessings that could possibly be there as your own, without a doubt. And you use that affirmation over and over again, I am confident. And again, you don't say that in a whiny way, okay? or in a half-hearted way, or in an undecided way. It is full, it is complete, it is yours. I am confident in my relationship with God, and I have no concerns about that. Doesn't, that. doesn't that feel pretty good? If you could wake up every day and establish that firmly in your mind, I am confident in my relationship with God. The day would be different, I will assure you. And everything that you experience would be different along the way. Now there's a second area where our confidence plays out and we live out that confidence. And that is in the relationship with ourself. And in psychology you hear a lot of terms like, like um, self-actualization, self-awareness, self-worth, and self-help. That last one reminds me of a story. This... <laughs> This is a good story I've told you before. Guy walks into Barnes and Noble, walks up to the desk, lady behind the desk, and he says, could you please tell me where your self-help books are? And she pauses a moment, looks at him, and said, well, if I did that, wouldn't that defeat the purpose? <laughs> if you didn't get it, ask somebody who laughed. All right? I have seen people after that joke, after that story, halfway through the service go, ah, oh, and they realize that they got it right there, okay. Our confidence plays out in our relationship to ourselves, with ourselves. Confident being lives to confident, leads to confident living. And in my relationship with myself, I can feel confidently. I can think with confidence. I can choose with confidence. I can act with confidence. And all that is a flow from the being of confidence into the living of consciousness. Years ago, when I used to wear a suit every Sunday, if you can believe I actually did that, uh, somebody had given me a little pin, about big as a quarter. And I used to wear it on the, you know, the, your coat has a pocket where a handkerchief or whatever goes in there. I used to wear it on the outside of that. And every Sunday before I got to preach, I'd do like this and read it. 
And the little pen said, damn, I'm good. <laughs> so every Sunday, that's the last thing I saw before I got up to preach. That's a little bit of confidence there, a confidence booster. So when, when we are, are living out this confidence in our, in our own life, there's one other area that's really important that you probably don't hear a lot about, and that is reflecting with confidence. Now, we all do this without thinking about it, and we do it in a mostly negative way. How many of you at the end of the day say, God, there was so much I didn't get done today that I should have done? Bam, 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 bam. I should have done that differently. I should have not have done that. should have done something else. So your review of the day is usually pretty critical for many people anyway. Reflecting on the day is important, but it's also important that we do it appropriately. I had a friend who was an entrepreneur, and one of his mantras in his life was plan, do, review. And that's the way he lived his life. That's the way he did his business. He'd plan exactly what he was going to do for the day, for the week, for the month. And then the day comes and he would do what was his to do in that day. And at the end of the day, he would say, okay, now let me go back and look at what I did and what I didn't do and how I did it. And after that, he had planned for the next day going on. It was always a positive thing. There was none of this beating up and judgment stuff at the end of it. Well, this is a real powerful tool that we can use if we use it appropriately. So while you are living confidently and doing what is yours to do confidently, if you stop at the end of the day and say, wow, this was a great day because I felt with confidence and I thought with confidence and I decided with confidence and I acted with confidence and however it played out out there is fine because it was a great day. Now, of all the things I did today, what could I do differently the next time that might change the outcome. You notice I didn't say a thing about better or worse. I didn't say anything about right or wrong. I simply said, how can I do something to bring about a different outcome from what I did today? Because what I did was the right thing. And the right thing tomorrow might be something else. But it's important to be able to review, to look at that. But to know underneath all of that is I am confident that I live this day fully and completely to the height of my consciousness in the moment. And there is no value whatsoever of beating yourself up and questioning your worth and questioning your wisdom and questioning your integrity and questioning how smart you are, whatever else. There's a great deal of support in questioning how can I do it better? And lead me in a positive direction. I am confident in what I think, feel, and do. And if you do that, if you take the time in the evening or whenever it works for you to evaluate, to review what you've done in a positive way, do it with confidence. It makes a difference in what comes the next day. So you find yourself being confident of your relationship with God. No problems there. You find yourself being, feeling confident in your relationship with yourself and how you show up in the world. Now, where else could we possibly manifest and express that confidence that is within us? And that is in relationship with other people. I have some quotes here about, about that. A lot of people confuse confidence and arrogance. It's not the same thing at all. Confidence is not arrogance. But confidence is contagious. I saw that on a poster. And you know that it is. When you go out into the world, you're confident with your relationship with God. You're confident with your relationship with yourself. And it shows up out in the world as you relate to other people as well. And it is contagious. Because whether you know it or not, when you live like that, somebody's looking at you saying, man, I want to live like that. I want some of what they have. I want to get where they got. It affects other people. Confidence is not arrogance. Now, the difference in confidence and arrogance, to kind of make that clearer, arrogance requires, I like some of these, arrogance requires advertising. Confidence speaks for itself. Arrogance smirks and confidence smiles. Arrogance is of the ego, confidence is of the soul. 
Be strong, but not rude. Be kind, but not weak. Be bold, but don't bully. Be humble, but not shy. Be confident, but not arrogant. So we find ourselves respecting other people in a different way when we come from a place of confidence. Now, one of the dynamics that we find operating in our world, and I've seen this watching people and dealing with people, is that if you perceive somebody else as weak and you perceive yourself as stronger, most of the time we become what? Aggressive and arrogant. If you perceive others as really strong and yourself at weak is weak, what happens? You become defensive and withdrawn. But what happens if I perceive myself as the perfect, whole, and complete manifesting of spirit right here, right now, and I perceive everybody that I meet as the perfect, whole, and complete expressing of God as well, then we meet, we look into each other's eyes, and we are equals. And we can respect one another. And we don't have to be alike to be the same. Now, how many of you like putting jigsaw puzzles together? Any fans here? Okay, a few. I, I love doing I haven't done it in a long time. We've got to do that sometime. Um, but I love putting jigsaw puzzles together. And what's the most infuriating thing in the world when you're a jigsaw putter together? Getting to the end, and there's one piece missing. Now, if you had a, and when you started that jigsaw puzzle, if I said to you, what is the most important part, piece of this puzzle? Which one? Is it the board or the edge? You know, you always put the edges together first and then fill in the middle. Is it the group that has the horse and the little girl over here that was easy to put together because you could see what was happening there? What's the most important piece of the puzzle? They all are. And the missing piece is, <laughs> gets the most attention. But every piece is equally important to that puzzle. And when you go out into the world and you meet other people, you will, meet, you will not meet a soul that is less important than you. And you will not meet a soul that is more important than you. We are, in the truest sense of the word, every one of us equal in the eyes of God. So when I look at you and I see me in you, and you see yourself in me, how are we going to fight and fuss? How are we going to take from one another? How are we going to hurt one another when we see that out in the world? I am confident of the Christ that is in you and the Christ that is in me. So when we, when we see each other in that way, we find ourselves in a place of peace, in a place of joy, in a place of hope in a place of, dare I say, confidence. There we are. When I know who I am, and I know who you are. Now, some people do a great job of covering up the Christ within. You've met some of those. Doesn't change the fact that they are indwelled with the Spirit of God as much as anybody they just don't know it yet. And you have to be prudent. You have to be wise in how you trust their humanness. But even while you are being careful about their dysfunction, you know at the heart of it that within them is the same Christ that moves within you. And you will treat them differently because of that. You may still treat them with caution. There are some people that I have pretty much banned from my life because they are choosing to live in a way that is inconsistent with the way I want to live. And I've essentially said to them, look, if you want to be in my world, here are the parameters. If you choose that way of life, that's outside the parameters and that won't fit in my world. I didn't say you go to hell. I didn't say you're a horrible person, you're worthless, or anything like that at all because I know the truth of them. I just don't want that humanness in my world but I still look at them knowing the truth, and that makes a difference. That doesn't leave room for hate. That doesn't leave room for meanness and arrogance. We are together. Will Rogers, Will Rogers, is he the cowboy philosopher? They got the right name there? Okay, Will Rogers, I always get him confused with William James. 
Will Rogers said, we're all ignorant, just in different places. So you're smart where I'm not, and I'm smart where you're not. When we get together, we're smarter together, right? And I know some things that you don't know, and you know some things that I don't know. When we get together, we're smarter. We're better. So this confidence that we have developed within ourselves, this confidence that allows us to come boldly before God, this confidence that allows me to believe in myself, then allows me to go out into the world and be a light and be an influence in my world, be a positive, an agent of positive change in my world. I am confident. I want you to do a little exercise with me. Think about the most beautiful sight you've ever seen. It may be we're going to Colorado in a couple of weeks and I can't wait to get on top of the mountain and see all of that out there. Wow, just moves me in an amazing way. Think about something that really touched you, really stirred the awe in you, something beautiful. And hold that feeling. And now as you are holding that feeling, affirm with me, I am confident. I am confident. Once again, hold that feeling and affirm with me. I am confident. Now think about a time it was the most fun you've ever had. I think probably mine are roller coasters. <laughs> Might not be that for you. But think about the feeling of absolute joy, that fun, that in pleasure. Hold that feeling now. And as you hold that feeling, affirm with me, I am confident. Again, I am confident. Now imagine holding a newborn baby in your hands. Brand new baby. Brand new. Tiny, tiny little fingernails. That just amazes me to no end. But you look at this innocent life, this brand new life, untouched by the world, unspoiled by the world, just pure being, totally dependent on whoever's holding it. And feel what happens to your heart when you see that. Feel that now, and in that feeling, affirm with me, I am confident. And again, I am confident. Think of a time when you felt most powerful, most successful, greatest accomplishment of your life has just been finished. Hold that sense in your heart of that, that great feeling of accomplishment, success. Hold that feeling and affirm with me. I am confident. And again, I am confident. Imagine you're putting a child to bed, tucking the covers around, and you lean down and whisper in the child's ear, I love you. Bring that feeling into your heart and hold it there. And whisper with me, I am confident. Hold that feeling and whisper, Well, I stand before you now, being confident, feeling confident, knowing confidence that you are in the process of deepening your awareness of confidence and being that confidence and expressing that confidence in all these areas now. Oh, wow. I so enjoy sharing in this community, and it's so much a part of my life, and I know so many of you value it as well in the same way. And we just welcome those who are tuning in on live stream today. Welcome to our community, to all of you who may be rather new here. We welcome you, and to all of our regulars and 
longtime members, we just together are confident that we are creating this wonderful spiritual community. And because you have been generous in your giving, we are able to do that. We encourage each of you to find what your commitment is uh, according to the value that you receive here and uh, how much you want us to continue forward and just continue with that giving. Throughout the summer times as we're traveling and everything else, we have that handy donate button on the uh, website <laughs> where you can uh, use our PayPal processor to get on there and send in your donation. But we just are grateful for what each and every one of you gives, not only financially, but also with your wonderful volunteer service and your attendance. So let's bless our giving today. Together, I give as an act of joy. As we have been blessed through the Creator's good pleasure, so are our gifts drenched in joy. Today, I declare joy for myself and all others. Joy is mine. Joy and more joy is mine. Everywhere I go, I see this joy. I feel it. I experience it. I freely give it. And it multiplies itself around me. And so it is.
Oh, yes, oh, yes. Our chaplains are ready to pray with you. Olga is over here, Melinda over there. Have a word of affirmative prayer. If you don't know what that is, have a word with them, and they'll tell you. They will show you. Uh, it's a very uplifting and confidence-raising form of prayer. So why don't we stand now as we close together. Hey, Catherine, you're here. Come on up. This is our uh, <laughs> Unity student extraordinaire who's just about ready to teach us, I think. When I taught Sunday school one week, uh, she was filling in the blanks. Really great. So are we ready to close and bless each other with our prayer for protection? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God envolves us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Let there be peace on earth.